Why do we downsize, declutter, live in a small apartment and do a budget? We do it to have a simple everyday life and we do it so we can travel and have lots of adventures as a family. And this time we're exploring Sulfi, a charming Danish island with lots of castles, thatched houses and dreamy beaches. Our home base is a centrally located Airbnb in Svendborg, and our friends Tina and Henrik are joining us on this summer adventure. Welcome back guys! This week we are on Fynen, which is Fyn. It's a big Danish island and we are exploring the southern part of it. We are at Eeskult Castle, right there. And they have a big like car, veteran car exhibit as well. They have some planes and apparently they have a world-renowned garden as well. I did not know that. I just thought it would be a pretty castle garden. But it's been featured all over the place and uh, can't wait to explore it. Let's check out the castle. We are on vacation with Tina. You remember her from Iceland and her guy over here. And like drive a faster car this castle as it looks today was built in 1554 and it hasn't changed a lot since then it's actually a family a private family who still owns it and runs it which is pretty cool the state hasn't taken over and turned it into a museum but that also means that it has a lot of functions and some of the rooms still look like they're kind of being used as hotel rooms when they have visitors and parties here which is kind of funny you better be So many cool old timer cars in here. You have to come see this if you ever visit Funen. It's close to Odense and it's close to Svendborg. So many cars. Probably a hundred, including the planes. The classic DeLorean from Back to the Future movies. They just don't make handles like that anymore. Too bad. I know I say this every single time, but I really love old cars. They're so beautiful, especially this kind. This is what a truck looked like in 1913. Oh. This is an old caravan camper trailer from 1953, made in Denmark by a furniture company. So everything is handcrafted and the furniture especially is really cool. These bunk beds here can fold down so the upper bed becomes the backrest and turns it into a sofa. You can see over here how it's turned up to become a bunk bed and in the other side you can see it converted into a sofa. It reminds me a lot of the clay sofas. Mm -hmm. the, um, the bunk Murphy beds, beds, the Murphy bed bunk beds, they're really, really cool. I love those. All the multifunctional furniture is amazing and it's just so much fun to see it like this. There was um, a bus in there with a family who lived in it for almost 15 years mm -hmm. uh, full time, which is amazing. That is something I would love to do. <laughs> I don't know if it would be possible. 15 years is a long time, um, but I just think it's so cool when people feel like they want a different kind of lifestyle mm -hmm, and they go after it and they do what they want to do. Especially living on the road, that's yeah. so cool. Yeah, so this little area without camping and RVing is so cool, it's right up our alley. One last thing about this camper, it can actually fold down to become half the height. So this part here and here will fold down. But it's like the prototype for a pop-up camper. Yeah, you can see the hinges, hinges, and it also says that it's a fold-down or pop-up trailer or whatever. So it was built as the first prize of a lottery, a Christmas lottery, and nobody came to pick it up. 
So a family eventually bought it and they donated it to this museum here like eight years, eight years ago, if I remember it right. And they, they used it up till 2010 to go camping with the family. That's pretty cool. I would really like to see this one out in action. That would be fun. Gotcha. This one also has the slide down top. And on here you can see the tracks over there. So it's easier to imagine how it pops down, up and down. That's so cool. It's all Danish uh, companies who made these, which is pretty cool. Whether you're into old cars or not, check out this building. That ceiling is amazing. Wow, it just continues in the next building. This is older stuff. You can see the first motorcycles and carriages. Very cool. One of the best things about rising early and get to the place in the morning is that you can sometimes have places like these for yourself. There's literally nobody here and it's awesome. <laughs> Thank goodness that there's a breeze, because otherwise this would have been unbearable. They're actually talking about that this summer has been the best summer in, I think, 85 years. It's crazy, and the driest one ever. So this might shape up to be the best summer ever, because we still have one and a half more months to go off the summer. I've heard that they have a treetop thing here, where you can walk on bridges up. Ooh, in the tree. So I'm gonna try and find that and test it out. Morten has already been uh, while Max was napping. We try to sometimes switch up so that I'll, for example, take him during nap time. I'll just lay there in the shadow somewhere and relax. And then Morten can go explore or see something if we're in a museum like this. And then other, and then afterwards we'll switch back the other way around. So Morten has already tried it and. Uh, I really want to too, because you guys know how much I love big trees. Okay, this is a little bit scary. It's so wobbly. Oh, and I'm really high up, but the trees are beautiful. Ooh. This is kind of weird because I'm normally not a big fan of heights, and this is very wobbly and it sways from side to side. But this is the first time I've been on something high and I'm not scared of it falling down. <laughs> so I guess I'm improving. Before we got here we checked out the prices online and I thought, to be honest, I thought they were a little bit too expensive. But we're just like, okay, it's been on my list forever, let's just go and explore it. But I can't really tell that you get a lot of bang for your buck here. They have so many different exhibits, museums, and the castle, and the gardens, and they have so freaking many playgrounds. They have the tree shot one for older kids, they have a go-kart stuff, they have a huge playground up there, and they have a huge one down in the forest as well. So, so much to keep kids entertained and if you live in this area I cannot imagine anything but that you will have like a year pass to this place because it's just a lot of entertainment for kids so do not be afraid to bring your kids to this museum because it's not a normal one it's a whole experience it's more like a theme park except no roller coasters but you know it's just big These hedges are enormous. They're like four or five meters high, I think. That's incredible. Give up everything that I own. Yeah, I'd give it all up now just to be with you somehow. Unexpected love was found. 
This dress is from 1874, and that is very well kept. They must have a big like wardrobe container somewhere just filled with all this stuff. East Gold Castle was a lot of fun. We've been here sort of the whole day. We decided that Max could nap here. So instead of going home as we usually do, we stayed here for like six or seven hours and we could spend a lot more time here. It's recommended for everyone, especially if you have kids. There are a lot of playgrounds and a lot of fun stuff to do and museums and cars and all this good stuff. And I would say I really am surprised too at how big it is and then the variety of things that you can do here. They have the museums and all the history stuff you can learn about. And um, I really enjoyed the little exhibit about um, camping and pop-up trailers and all that kind of stuff. And just seeing how people did this on the road lifestyle many, many years ago. Even back in the 50s and 60s in something that looked like RVs and travel trailers, which is fantastic. So I just find that very inspiring and it's really good for me to kind of get reminded of that sometimes. Max is, he just turned two yesterday actually. Um, and he is still a small toddler. Like he's running around and has so much energy. And it's kind of hard for me to see a full-time life on the road right now. But when we come to next spring and summer, that's when we're kind of hoping that we can do a longer trip, maybe for a month or two, maybe more, or maybe a few of them. It's just really inspiring and really encouraging sometimes to see that people have done it for 15 years in a row. We're always trying to find the balance and every family is different and every family has different preferences in what you want to do, what you want to see, what kind of energy you can spend doing those things. And uh, I think for us right now, these smaller trips are working out great. It's a really good way for us to test out things that work, things that don't work. And we're just really enjoying Denmark this summer. It's amazing. And then we're probably ready by next year to go and explore internationally again. And hopefully it will be in the trailer. <laughs> Max wants to go check out some more horses. So we're gonna sign out for now. Bye.